After the stage at Alpe d'Huez, the main characters were once again cast in changed roles. The Tour de France is so big, so intense, and is played out over such an extended period of time, there is built into the event a dimension that, like comic relief in Greek tragedy, lets the tour let off steam. On the day before Bastille Day, bugles mysteriously appear. And then, the wave. The rampant commercialism which accompanies the tour acts as an antidote for the deep emotions stirred by the race. In a suspension of normal values, freebies are everywhere. Sometimes the tour's presence catalyzes an event already going on, as when the tour came to Marseille on the day of France's bicentennial. A dynamic of the tour is that those who follow it are witness to excesses of exercise while doing very little of their own. And there's the press corps rumble at the finish. Day after day, a frenzy that triggers the release from the tensions of following that day's stage. On the tour, there are even those for whom talking is a sport in itself. Two hundred twenty-eight miles to go in the Tour de France on the morning after the emotional ride to Alpe d'Huez. Le Mans number is reattached to the team shirt as the Tour tug of war now favors Vignon. Both are refueled as the start of the stage draws near. From Alpe d'Huez, there is a car ride down to Borg d'Oisson for the start. Fignon enters the sea of idolatry. The car ride for Greg Lamont will retrace the road where he reached the limit when he reached for more. His deficit is 26 seconds. This is clearly a memorable race, a race that seemed to extend the tension beyond stages where it seemed like it would end. Even after Alpe d'Huez, there are more mountains today. The search for clues as to who is emotionally leading is fruitless, as both are veterans of the bluffing game. On the road, Greg does seem unsettled at stories and rumors that reportedly have been taken to his rivals. Now that's going to get to Finian and Delgado. Now think I did that. On this morning, they have led parallel lives, eating, autographing, thinking, and driving. But then little has separated them since the day in Brittany two weeks ago. Now, stage 19 presents the opportunity to change all that. Borg d'Oisson at the bottom of the mountain, long a center of exploration in these valleys, assumes that role again. Today, the cyclists will follow for a time the route of Napoleon, which it seems is the French equivalent to George Washington slept here. Stage 18 is only 57 miles long from Borg to Villard de Long, and it will, as it climbs three smaller mountains, bring the cyclists out of the high Alps to a resort region near Grenoble. Greg Lamond catching up to the peloton after a roadside stop to heed the call of nature. To be a great champion in an event this long, you must be able to recover quickly. And the day before, Greg was exhausted at Alpe d'Huez. Now he has his energy back and his spirit. Lauren Fignon, the star of Alpe d'Huez, content to stroke along in momentary anonymity. After his big gains in the Pyrenees, Delgado had been watched like a man under a microscope. When would he attack again? He never has. Australian Phil Anderson, a veteran of the tour, attempts a break. It fails and is followed by a three-man break. Lucha Herrera and another Colombian, Albalard El Rondon from Delgado's team, and the star of stage 16, the Swiss Pascal Richard. Their break also fails. Fignon and Le Mans still have a Terminator grip on the pace of this race. As they have gone, so goes this Tour de France. The interesting point was never knowing which one was going to go first. Now the pressure is clearly on Le Mans. Frenchman Charlie Motet just a few days ago was knocking on the leader's door. But the Terminators 
have been too tough to keep up with. For the second straight day, Tunisia is right in the middle of things. There are a few more mountains to go that can give him the polka dot jersey. Vignon and Lamond have slightly different ideas about what they'd like to wear. A relaxed pace so far on this stage as far as the leaders go, but the last mountain climbs are straight ahead. And every time that was the case, the day's strategy was played out for all to see. The question is then, will what we see include a breakaway by Greg Lamond? It certainly seems to be what his current deficit situation in this Tour de France would demand. Stage 18 continues, and rounding an uphill bend, it is Lauren Fignon, not Greg Lamond, who once again makes a move. He has stated that the man who wears the yellow jersey should be a leader. This is a deed that backs up his words. The Frenchman looks very strong. The French, who seem to always wait to see their heroes suffer a bit before they love them, have seen Fignon suffer, and now they love this. Lamond, Tunisa, Delgado, and indecision. Go after Fignon or not. It seems hard to believe that a man who had just the day before rode as hard as Fignon did would have anything left. But this could be a critical moment for Le Mans. If Fignon gains more time, even if it's just a few seconds, then the advantage Le Mans is thought to have in the time trial in Paris may no longer be enough. Fignon, two attacks in two days. A man on top of his game. Delgado finally responds, followed by Tunisa and Le Mans. Is the reply to Fignon coming too late? Only nine men in the history of the Tour have ever won in consecutive years. Laurent is one of them, and he was the first Parisian to ever win in Paris. And whatever he felt when cycling used to be great is what he's feeling right now. A solo break, his lead slowly growing. This is working well. Struggling to keep pace with the chase group is Mexico's Raul Alcala and Ireland's Sean Kelly of Team PDM, the Tour's best so far. Alcala won a stage in Belgium, what seems years ago, and Kelly has been most consistent wearing the green jersey to prove it. Kelly may be the greatest cyclist to never win the Tour de France. Heading uphill, Fignon continues to set a possessed, staggering pace. The lead has increased. Greg Lamont may be watching Fignon cycle out of reach. Others join the pack pursuing Fignon, and almost as if he has sensed the hounds behind him, Fignon the hare runs even harder. Delgado moves out to attack. One of the single most daring, stylish moves the Tour de France has seen so far is drawing to a close. Lauren Fignon winning stylishly. It's everything he believes in. The day after Alp d'Huez, he wins the stage. Greg Lamont, sensing the urgency, has picked up the pace dramatically. And with the aerodynamic help of the group he's with, has chopped Fignon's gain down to 24 seconds. Delgado, left behind by the sprint, has for the first time since the opening week gone the wrong way on the clock. He loses time and drops 228 behind. Lamont, who had been prepared for a powerful emotion at Alpe d'Huez, is confronted with a powerful fact. The time he has just lost pushes the envelope of what it is possible for him to make up. The winner of stage 18, the 57 miles, Fignon, dramatically. And so, it is a 50-second deficit now, faced by Greg Lamont in this Tour de France. Andy Hampson now more than a half an hour back. Tour history and peloton etiquette now tell Greg Lamont one thing, that there will be no breakaways in stages 19 and 20. The flatland and the break after the mountains almost demands it. That means if Greg Lamont is going to catch Lauren Fignon making up the 50 seconds, he'll have to do it on the last day in the 15-mile individual time trial in Paris. Fignon enjoys the result of his effort, but he too must already be thinking of the showdown in his hometown. Greg, the first question we must ask, 50 seconds now, is that too much to win the Tour de France for you? Uh, considering the, 
the distance of the time trial, it's going to be a difficult task to do. Uh, if it was a 50 kilometer time trial, I think there would be some very good hope that I could, and it's still not over, but uh, it, it's it's less likely today. It's uh, I've done my best. I just you know, Finian yesterday and today has been extremely strong. Finian down and looking like he was out just three days ago extends his lead. Greg Lamont, in the face of his deficit, must look to an unprecedented stroke of luck, a clear head and the ride of his life, which few think is possible. 198 men began it, but the Tour de France is now quite clearly a two-man show.